Hello everyone. Welcome to part 2 of my LACA Retrocade video. In this video I am going to demonstrate how to load ROMs onto the same SD card as your flashed LACA image to free up the second controller port and also how to set up LACA to work correctly with your Retrocade device. So sit back, relax and join me as I walk you through another simple but effective Retrocade hack. The first thing you want to do after you flash LACA to the SD card is to insert it straight into your Retrocade. This is to allow it to complete an initial boot. It is very important that you do not skip this step, as this is the stage where all the partitions and RetroArch files and folders are created on the SD card. Once the Retrocade has created the partitions and relevant folders it will automatically reboot your Retrocade into LACA. At this stage you will want to set up LACA to work correctly with your Retrocade controllers. The first thing we need to do is set up a way of exiting back out to the main menu from any ROMs that we load. To change these settings we simply need to go into the input settings and change the menu toggle gamepad combo option to hold start for 2 seconds. This way we can now hold down the start button to exit any game back into the LACA menu. Then you are going to want to map the controller buttons. Using the user binds menu options. Again this is a simple process. Select the desired controller and then assign and map the relevant buttons following the on-screen instructions. Obviously if using the standard Retrocade controllers you will not have all the button options to map. You will only need to map the same buttons that I have demonstrated here. You are now done setting up your Retrocade and can now power down and remove the SD card and reinsert it into your PC. Next check that your SD card is showing and is available when inserted into your PC. As you can see here mine has been assigned Drive F and already has a LACA image flashed onto it. However this is not the partition of the SD card that we are interested in. We need to gain access to the hidden Linux partition on the SD card. To enable us to do this we will need to download and install some software. The software is Linux file systems for Windows by Paragon Software. I have provided a link to the software in the video description for your convenience. Once downloaded and installed, open the software and it should automatically recognize the Linux partition on your SD card in the drive and then should bring up a menu option to be able to mount the Linux partition within Windows. This then mounts the partition as a drive within Windows and allows it to become available within File Explorer to read and write to. As you can see mine has been assigned Drive H. If you then open the new drive within File Explorer you can then navigate to the ROMs folder which is here. It's then just simply a case of copying your selection of ROMs over to this folder on your SD card. You can set up subfolders for all the different systems and emulator cores. As you can see here currently on my desktop I have ROMs from multiple different systems already copied across and placed in their respective folders. I have added the following to these folders to test. Tekken for the PS1. Super Mario World for the SNES. Streets of Rage 2 for the Mega Drive. Neo Turf Masters for Neo Geo, remembering to include the Neo Geo BIOS file in the same folder as the ROMs. And finally Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition for MAME. LACA already has most of the BIOS files for the majority of cores but you will need to provide your own for certain systems such as the PS1. As you can see here I have the PS1 BIOS files ready to copy over and any required BIOS files get added to the system folder.
Once you have copied all the desired ROMs and BIOS files across to the SD card go back into Paragon software and unmount the drive. It's important that you remember this step as it can cause corruption of your SD card if you don't. Once unmounted you can then eject your SD card from your PC, place it in the Retrocade and boot into LACA as normal. Then you want to navigate to import content. Then scan directory. This will have automatically defaulted to your ROMs folder so simply select scan this directory. LACA will then start the scanning process and will try to locate any ROMs that it recognizes and automatically group them under each respective system. You can then navigate to these new menu items and select the games from this list easily and quickly. So ok let's test Tekken for the PS1. It's simply a case of selecting the game from the PS1 menu. Then selecting run. And then selecting the respective core for that system. In this example I chose the relevant PlayStation core to run this PS1 game. You only need to select and assign a core once. LACA will remember it for the future. As we said earlier, we can exit back into the main menu at any time by holding down the start button for 2 seconds. Next I will test Streets of Rage 2 for the Mega Drive. Next I will test Super Mario World for the SNES.
Next I will test Street Fighter 2 for MAME. You might have noticed that Laka has not discovered the Neo Turf Masters ROM that I also copied across to test. But not to worry as we can still manually select and run the ROM simply by clicking on load content. Then navigate to the relevant ROM folder and select the ROM file and then choose load archive. And then select the respective core for that system. In this example I have chosen final burn Neo for this Neo Geo ROM. You can also add any game to your favorites including any game not originally picked up by Laka. By clicking on the ROM and then selecting add to favorites. The games not recognized by Laka can be added by clicking on the ROM in the history menu and then selecting add to favorites from there. Well that's it. Laka is now all set up to work with the Retrocade. I hope you will enjoy being able to play a wide variety of ROMs from a host of different systems. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe for more retro hacks.